All right, let's balance this equation. Now I notice that you started by supposing there was one nitrogen here, but then you noticed that, that would force you to use a fractional coefficient over here. So I think it was a good decision to change your mind and put the one over here, uh, and then the two over here to avoid the fraction, and then that would give us three. So we have one, three, and two. Let's go back to start change in tables. Let's say that we're starting with 10 moles of each of these. Now, let's say that this reaction is going to go to completion. There's two types of reactions, reactions that go to completion and reactions that go to equilibrium. And we're focusing uh, right now on reactions that go to completion. I don't know if this goes to completion in real life, but let's just suppose that it goes to completion. And let's figure out how much ammonia is going to be produced, which means we want to figure this out. So let's talk about uh, talk through this together um, a little bit. Well, we need to figure out now, well, I know we're assuming, of course, that we're starting with no ammonia product. So we need to figure out these changes. Well, th will these be pluses or minuses? Minuses. And this will be plus. Yeah. Now we need to, need to figure out how much of these we're going to use up. Eh. Let's, uh, let's do a warm up here. Let's say, let's say we have two slices of bread. And one slice salami, and we use that to form one sandwich. Start, change, end. Let's say that this reaction goes to completion. And we want to figure out how many sandwiches we can produce. All right, so we'll take a detour here. We'll forget about the, uh, the chemical species for a second and go back to the sandwich equation. So let's write this down, and then we can think about how to deal with that. Any suggestions? How can we figure out how many sandwiches we're going to produce here? Um, we can uh, start with either slices of bread or salami. Mm -hmm. And find the, um, find the change. Okay. And then use the change to find. So let's work that out. Let's work that out in detail. How would that work step by step? start with uh, bread, two slices of bread, mm -hmm. uh, and we have ten slices, Right. and this goes to completion, so there's going to be, uh, there's going to be um, a minus of ten slices, correct? That sounds okay, all right, then what? Minus ten slices of bread. Uh, my target that I uh, 
and then up well, the end is going to be the overall, uh, the end value is going to be zero. True. And then I, like I said, would write down um, my target, which I want is sandwich. Okay. And then I can write down my starting, 10 slices of bread, correct? Right. And then I have uh, for uh, two slices of bread are used for every sandwich. Right. Now, I noticed that you were focusing here on the slices of bread. Yeah. Could we have done this by focusing on the slices of salami? Mm -hmm. How would that work? Um, well, uh, I know I'm going to use um, You mean uh, uh, now with the information we have? Or no, I'm sorry. It's starting from scratch. OK. How do you know why not why five and not ten? Because uh, coefficients for uh, we use two slices of bread for every ten slices long. Okay. So there just wouldn't be a nine. Okay, good. That was the key thing that I wanted to make sure that you were seeing in this problem. Um, we're not going to be able. So we have enough salami. So forget about the bread for a second. We have enough salami to make how many sandwiches? Ten sandwiches. We could make ten sandwiches based on the salami from the 10 slices of salami. We could work that out here. 10 slices salami, one slice salami for each one sandwich is 10 sandwiches. Now, it seems like we have a contradiction here. Five sandwiches from the bread and ten sandwiches from the salami. But what does that tell us? Well, here, uh, I'm trying to use a, a common, ordinary example so we can see the, the common sense of this. What this is telling us is we have enough bread to make five sandwiches. And we have enough salami to make ten sandwiches. So if we make the maximum possible number of sandwiches, how many sandwiches are we going to make? Five. Just the five because we're going to run out of bread before we can make all 10 of these sandwiches. Maybe we should step back for a second and forget about the math. Now, this is a problem we could do without any math, right? This is the kind of thing you can do in your kitchen any day. You look in the cupboard and you see uh, how much uh, food you have and how many sandwiches you can make. So you would look at this and you um, hopefully you wouldn't say to yourself, aha, I got 10 slices of salami, so that's 10 sandwiches I got coming to me. Because you'd have to realize you'd run out of bread before you ran out of salami, in this case. You wouldn't actually have to write down these uh, stoichiometric conversion ratios to work that out, usually, right? You'd just say to yourself, well, I know every sandwich takes two slices of bread, so I have enough bread for uh, five sandwiches. Uh, and every sandwich only takes one slice of salami, so I have enough salami for 10 sandwiches. But this is irrelevant, because I only have enough bread for the five sandwiches. So I wanted to use an ordinary example so we could see the common sense of this. It's good to be able to do this with the conversion ratios, but the conversion ratios are just supposed to be formalized common sense that we can kind of see from the equation. So the key concept we're using here is the concept of the limiting reagent. We need to say here that, so who's the limiting reagent? Bread. Yeah, the bread here is the limiting reagent. How would you define the limiting reagent in words? What, is, what does the term limiting reagent mean in chemistry? Um, once it's used up, you can't, the reaction will proceed any further to the product. That's true. Of course, that, that's on the right track. Of course, once anything is used up, the reaction won't proceed anymore. But So we can modify that. We can say the limiting reagent is what we're going to run out of first. The limiting reagent is what we're going to run out of first. This is a concept we use all the time in the kitchen. When you're deciding what, whether you need to go shopping, you have to ask, well, what am I going to run out of first? So someone might look here, look here and say, gee, I don't need to go shopping for a long time because I got plenty of salami. 
but they would be wrong because they forgot their limiting reagent, which is the bread. They probably have to go shopping pretty soon because they only got enough bread for five sandwiches. This is the limiting reagent in this case. So the limiting reagent is a very ordinary concept. It's what you're going to run out of first. 